Zane Little John, it's fantastic to officially welcome you to the Box Hill Hawks. Uh, tell us a little bit about your footy journey so far and, and how you've come to land with us here at City Oval. Yeah, thanks, mate. No, good to be here and really excited. Um, so I guess my journey started all the way back in uh, the island state of Tassie, uh, down in Tasmania, and I was um, obviously played a lot of my junior footy on the northwest coast, but then decided I'd give teaching a go at university and headed off to Tolani to do my university degree, and that's sort of where I joined the North Launceston Footy Club, which is probably um, where I've spent some of my, I guess, my footy years, some of my most proudest footy years. Um, at the North Orney Footy Club. At first as a player and then went in, in to start coaching there at a pretty young age at 24. I was um, appointed as their senior coach, which was really exciting. Um, and then that's sort of where my real passion probably came to want to get into footy full time. And I thought, yeah, I, I could do this. I really I always wanted to ideally be drafted. That was as a young kid playing, but then unfortunately, um, came to a realisation I probably wasn't good enough, probably wasn't quick enough, probably wasn't big enough to be drafted. So um, the, the idea of thinking, well, how else can um, I be involved in footy full time was, was through the coaching, which um, I was studying to be a teacher at the time. So sort of that teaching and, and, and coaching sort of aligned really nicely together. And um, yeah, I was lucky enough that the, the North Lawn Sessions Footy Club, Thane Brady, the president there, you know, just showed a lot of faith in me and the board at that time to appoint me at 24 years old, like really young. Um, I'd sort of never coached senior level footy before and, and I was going to coach a lot of players I'd played with. Um, but they sort of um, showed a bit of faith in me and our first two years was a bit of a struggle. We sort of out of 10 teams finished eighth, so second last, sort of third last, those first two years. But then things turned really nicely and we had a really good young group who wanted to get better. Um, every time they come into the footy club, wanted to improve and uh, we ended up going on and I think um, I coached in three three grand finals. We won two of those, but they ended up playing in about seven or eight grand finals in a row, which was as a footy club in Tassie, which is um, a pretty pretty phenomenal effort any footy club. And last year's the first time they've missed the finals since 2014. So really nice um, footy club to be involved in. It sort of gave me an opportunity. And then from that opportunity, obviously an opportunity came uh, where I got a phone call from the Brisbane Lions to join them um, at the end of 2016. So the 2017 season as a development coach. and there was my opportunity to, to work in footy full time. So very lucky that that came and I jumped at that to go and work with the likes of obviously Chris Fagan and uh, Murray Davis, Dale Tapping, those sort of coaches up there where I learned so much and um, off them. And I, I probably went there knowing, thinking I knew a fair bit about footy, but um, there's a whole another side of it when you get all the resources around you um, from from the, um, the analyst to um, the vision you get there. So it was a really, really good, cool and um, exciting experience to be involved in that program. And from that, I sort of shifted a little bit sideways after COVID and went in to coach the academy at the Lions, which was another great experience to work with. Again, as I mentioned, my time at North Lonnie with the um, exciting young group who just wanted to get better, to work with these young, um, I guess the best, best under 18 kids in our and under 16 kids um, in the Brisbane Lions zone. Um, was really exciting and to manage my own program again um, and that's really really scratched my itch to to get involved and, and sort of manage my own program and i'm an ambitious person and i sort of wanted to keep trying to get better and grow and um, that's when this opportunity um Colo, andy collins at the hawthorne footy club reached out to me and um that's sort of where yeah, that opportunity started from and here i am so what was it about the phone call what was it about the opportunity presented not just to be a development coach at Hawthorne, but again, yeah, coach your own program. Yeah, well, that's it. Yeah, manage my own program, really, um, at a great level um, and a really proud footy club. Um, it's funny that my, I've played two VFL games in my time back in Tassie, and my first ever VFL game was against Box Hill. So, I, and I saw how, how proud they, they came down and played us in Tassie and um, the Hawthorne um, Box Hill alignment, how proud that was. Um, and all I've heard about this football club um, since I landed the job, even before I landed the job, because you sort of naturally do your own research, it's just how good the people are. And um, I think one thing I learned from Faze is you get the people in the right seats and the bus drives itself. And um, that's what I'm really excited with, to work with really good people around this footy club and the Hawthorne footy club as well. And and um, and I guess one, help the footy club achieve what that, their ultimate success is. And, and also every individual who walks in the door, be staff, be players, um, achieve their ultimate dreams as well. So what is it that, uh, if you, you sit here and reflect on your journey to date and what led you to make the move and take the role, what is it you love most about coaching? 
Um, I, I just like help, helping people achieve their ultimate, what, what that may be, and everyone's so so different. And I, and, and I talk, my, my priority will be our players and our coaches, but even our staff at our footy club here at Box Hill, like, I want them to be able to achieve their goals. We'll have physios who, um, who want to go and cheat. they might be happy in this and this might be their niche and that's completely fine and I want them to make sure they enjoy that time. Um, you know, there might be you know, S&C people who have ambitions to go further, I want them to be able to experience and, and being involved in an environment where they feel that they can grow and, and be, be the best they can be and um, I've got to model that behaviour myself. So um, I guess that's probably what draws me to coaching is the success of others and, and seeing them achieve their their dreams and goals as well, and and just the challenge of what comes with with managing your own program. You got personalities and all of those things as well, but that's exciting. Um, I'm a real strong believer in in um, in valuing the process of, of of it all, and and if we get the process right and outcomes and goals and all that will take care of itself. So um, yeah, that real process driven um, of being involved around a, a really a really solid and, and enjoyable program. You mentioned Chris Fagan, you mentioned your time at North Launceston. Um, was there a particular coach or is, is there a particular coach or figure in your footy journey today that sort of you consider a mentor or a bit of an inspiration in terms of your coaching today? Yeah, I've had a few and I, I, I don't like to individualise any individual in the, in the fact of, of where I'm at. Um, but along my whole journey, like I, I had um, like my, first, my first real senior coach in, in Manny Lynch, Alistair's um, brother. Um, he he's still a mentor to me now, and uh, more of a personal mentor, someone I can bounce ideas off personally, and um, if I've got any moral dilemmas or, or whatnot, and he can just really align me really strongly. And he's a great family friend of mine, and someone I love the man. To be honest, if I sit here right now, um, uh, another guy who I worked really closely with at, at North Launceston, Brett Mansell, um, being just a it's just a really good narrower for me to keep believing in myself. Um, so he, he's someone I bounce a lot of ideas off as well. But in the elite programs, are obviously Dale Tapping, who's now at the Essendon Footy Club. Um, Coach Collingwood, VFL as well. Uh, VFL Coach of the Year. All those experiences. And I worked under Taps up in, up in um, Brisbane when he was the midfield coach. And he's been, um, oh, he's, he's been sensational for me as a young coach growing. Working under him, he I, I didn't feel like I ever worked under him, actually. I always worked with him. He always brought me along and gave me opportunities to grow as a young coach, um, which sometimes in an AFL environment, coaches don't want to do because it's so fickle and it's, it's, it's a tough industry and it's a win-loss industry. Uh, but he, he didn't see it like that. He sort of had the same morals as me he, of bringing others along and helping them grow. And he, he's been fantastic with me in, in, that, in that space. Um, and Faye's absolutely like, um, Faye's being a senior coach, you don't want to be in his back pocket, but I learned so much from Chris Fagan, um, just from observing him, um, being in conversations with him, one-on-one um, -on -one conversations or group conversations, just how he handles his players and, and stuff like that. And um, I, I said to him before I left the footy club up there that, you know, although yeah, as I haven't been in your back pocket, mate, but I've learned so much from a distance and, and just being involved with you and, and the way you've run this footy club. And I hope that in some small way I can run Box Hill Football Club, very similar to the way Chris Fagan has, has run um, the, the football club in regards to the people and all that. And, and then there's the exciting bit of now learning from Sam and the Hawthorne coaches as well. That's, that's really, really exciting. I, I love Sam Mitchell as a player so, um, and, and whatnot. And then you know, I've got Chris Newman who's coached his football club to a premiership. Um, so I've got, I'm sharing an office with him now, which is fantastic. And that's the beauty about footy is the journey and the people you meet along the way. So I've been very lucky in that space. There's not one particular individual. I've had a lot of people along the way to help me and support me to where I am today. Isn't it fascinating? You mentioned sharing an office there. Sam's playing journey starts here. He comes back and coaches, which was great. Newey coaches us to a flag. Even Fags as a mentor, spent time in and around the program and the like. It's, it's funny how footy works at times. By extension of that conversation, I suppose, how would you describe, you know, your style or coaching philosophy? Um, if there's any of the boys watching along, what could they expect? <laughs> yeah, so I'm. Um, I, I like to give the players a bit of ownership. I think it's 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 not my way; it's our way. Um, I think it's important that we we um, we value, as I mentioned this before, we've got to value the process and get that bit right. And if we can get that bit right, the outcome will take care of itself. I'm big on that. I'm big on making sure that we think about others. Football, or it's a team game, but you, you play a particular role within that team. 
but I'm big on trying to make sure that the individual understands how that role helps others. Um, and not, not just players, it's the staff, it's how the players can help the staff. Like, um, it's all, all of that and just how it all fits together. I think it's really important and there's some great programs at this footy club that help players realise that themselves. So my job now is, um, as a senior coach, isn't to come and change any of that or, or whatnot. It's just to fit in and help mould that, continue to grow and, and be the best. But um, yeah, a lot of ownership to players, the right ownership. Like obviously we've got to make decisions as a senior coach and um, our coaching group will still have to make decisions and all that. But I like to think that I give the players the opportunity to grow holistically. Um, but also perform their best when the time comes. I suppose the beauty, and this is my observation, um, of the Box Hill Hawthorne alignment is that it at all times maintains a, a development focus, but a results-based imperative at the same time. We want to develop people and players, but we also want to win. 100%. So from you as a coach, how important is that balance? Yeah, well, winning is part of development. <laughs> like, you've you got to learn to win. That's, um, you know, losing can become a habit. So we don't want to talk that language. We want to make sure that our players continue to develop, Hawthorne and Box Hill. Um, there'll be a lot of similarities across our whole program that Hawthorne are running, that will be running here at Box Hill to help players develop. That's, um, and I, I, I think the relationship between Box Hill and Hawthorne is phenomenal. Everyone tells me it's phenomenal and, and I, I only want to strengthen that. I don't don't want to come in between that. So we'll, we'll have a, a mentality that want to win football games. We'll have our way we want to win though. Um, so that's that's going to be the real the real challenge. Well, not the challenge, but the really exciting part of my role is helping mould the two football clubs together um, to achieve their ultimate success in each in each program. But um, when it comes to Saturday, we'll be one program, which is really exciting. We'll under the Hawks logo, um, we're the brown and gold, which is really exciting. So the one footy club in that space. And then lastly, pre-season for us officially kicks off tomorrow with session number one. What are your priorities as that all gets underway? Yeah, so we've got a large group coming in, which is exciting. So we'll get to see a few few new faces, a few familiar faces that I'm sure um, we've all seen before. Uh, so all, all our priority will be is just getting our boys back moving again, um, back getting to know each other, and, and really for, for me and the other coaches to learn the new guys and how they, how they might fit into our group, we've got, to, we've got to get our list down to a certain size to be able to perform through the year. So we've got a few list spots still open, or quite a few actually, so there's guys be vying for spots. So we want to see guys who want that spot, really. We want to see guys who value and want to be a part of the Box Hill program, not just want to play at Box Hill and play VFL footy, but a part of the Box Hill program and, the, and what that includes. So we'll be looking, looking for the players who we feel is going to fit into that. Um, and that, like I said, that's a holistic approach. It's not just the best footballer, um, but the best people to fit into that program as well. So over the next sort of four weeks before Christmas, that's what we'll be looking at. And um, it's unfortunate that all the boys at training won't be able to make us have a spot on our list, but it doesn't mean their journey with Box Hill ends. It might just mean it's not their time now. It might be next year or the year after, which their, their opportunity will come to perform and play for Box Hill. Well, Zane, it's been an absolute pleasure getting to know you a bit better and we'll continue to do so over the pre-season. Thanks for your time. Cheers, mate.